I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for my Raptor. 2010 Ford Raptor. Jacob's dream car. Thanks to everyone who watches and subscribes on YouTube. You guys are the only reason we were able to buy this. Thank you for watching. That's all you can do. Share the videos. Thank you. And we will also get your ear prowler. Yes. I'm, I'm really, really working out. Trust we me. We are. I'm lowballing yeah. everyone I can find. I'm sending them links everywhere. And also, big shout out to all our sponsors throughout the years and our Patreoners because that helped a lot too. Yeah. This is the big shout out thread. Big shout out to everybody that sponsored my old Lexus GS430 because people have been asking about that as well. That is sold. Okay. So horsepower and torque. 411 horsepower and 434 pound feet of torque on 90 one octane you can run this on 87 and get 401 horsepower so you have the 6.2 liter v8 i absolutely do was there any chance you were going to get the 5.4 liter i was absolutely not okay and then this is also orange yes it is was there any chance you were going to get orange a potential chance to get blue but no and this showed up with orange on orange interior yes it did okay so this you is exactly the spec that i wanted i didn't want the big infotainment screen because it would suck because it's so old like sync two this is sync one this is sync one this is sync one <laughs> this is the beginning and you guys already saw the whole buying process video but now we're going to do it normal review style through Cliche Corner and everything. Daily driving my world's cheapest Ford Raptor at the time that I bought it with the highest mileage at the time that I bought it. And I look forward to your comments telling me that you have a higher mileage one and you see cheaper ones. You did join a bunch of Raptor forums because now you are technically a Raptor guy. Oh, I'm fully a Raptor guy. Are they very supportive of this truck or do they like the newer version more? It depends. There's hardcore Gen 1 people and there's hardcore Gen 2 people and they just have at it with each other. It's actually pretty hilarious. <laughs> I've driven the new one. I know how good it is. It's really good, but I still want this one. This yeah. is slower, no doubt, but it doesn't matter. This is the one I want. Because it's V8, it's natu V8. naturally aspirated. Yep. The original one that that guy jumped. Yep. It's, it's, it's cool. It's, it's the it, one. It, it's an icon. And before we keep going, today's episode is actually sponsored by Sigma Lenses. They gave us some of the lenses we've been like begging to get from them. They are 1.4 aperture. They are so friggin' sweet. They're the best. We've been using them for a couple of reviews. You guys probably noticed. Probably a couple of months. Like, yeah, yeah. I saw a couple comments. So what 1.4 aperture? means is that it lets more light in so the background is blurrier than on like a normal kit lens that you get with your DSLR. It looks very professional. And here's a comparison of what it would look like with like an f5.6 like on a normal kit lens compared to the f1.4. Huge difference. So if you've got a DSLR, if you're into hobby photography, check out Sigma Canada, check out their lenses, follow Sigma Canada on Instagram. So everybody probably is wondering what has broken on it? Because that's what everyone wants to know. The window switch up here for the rear window broke. So I replaced that myself. $40. Check this out. Works perfectly. I pressed it the wrong way. There it is. That's it. That's the only thing that's broken. And now I fixed it. Oh, and I actually forgot about one thing that's actually still broken. The rear step still doesn't work. Oh, yeah, yeah. You... I will eventually fix that but I don't care. So the guy must have never used it. Yeah. Because that's that why was, it got seized up. That was an option. So he actually got it and then just never used it, which is hilarious. Okay, and a big update from the buying video, you did get this interior clean because it was the most smoker interior I'd ever been in. Yes, it was filthy. I don't smell it. I swear to God. Our auto detail, you knocked it out of the park. Yeah, so shout out to our auto detail because you cleaned the hell out of this thing. Follow on Instagram, like I'm shocked. Anyone that's saying don't buy a smoker's car, I bought it knowing that I could get it out and it's gone. Yeah. He did two ozone treatments and then he cleaned the whole interior, no smell. It was so bad that at the mechanic shop, you opened up the car and I was sitting in, I was standing in front of the car and I could smell it and now nothing. It was really bad, like, like really bad. <sighs> now, spotless, look at this. The buttons are actually white now. They were all brown. That, yeah, this is this is next level interior. How nice is this now? Here's, here's a gratuitous shot of the interior. Here's a gratuitous shot of the suicide doors opening up to the interior. You guys got to look at this. It's all orange. Like this is crazy. I love it. And you, know what, you know what else I like about the orange? What's that? I've been looking at the press footage from the initial launch from that Raptor video you made me watch. Yes. And like they start off the press launch with a Raptor in orange flying in. That's what I'm saying. Like it was very cool. This is the only truck that had jumping as part of its testing regimen. So when they were testing this truck, when they were making it, jumps were part of testing. Name another car or truck that's done that. Nothing. T-Rex, not out yet. Maybe the Rebel, but I doubt it. No, Maybe the ZR2. I think they jumped the ZR2 at the launch. Let us know in the comments. Still not a Raptor. Yeah, exactly. And what else is everyone probably wondering about? How much have I spent on the world's cheapest Raptor at the time that I bought it? How much? $2,000. Canadian. In, in general maintenance. That's it. 
I would have had to spend that on a $30,000 Raptor as well because all I did was like flush all the transmission fluids. Every fluid got a flush, which it didn't need, but I wanted to do all that basic maintenance stuff. And then the detail, and that's basically it. Okay, so let's start the review review part, normal style. You wanna do driving or looks? Let's do driving. Okay, so how much better does it drive now than when you first picked it up? So much better. So I have new General Grabber ATX tires, so shout out to General, our what's, sponsor. What's the Continental slash uh, <laughs> General tire recommended for this car? The General Grabber <laughs> ATX, which is what I'm riding on. I could have gone for the X3, but I didn't want those because they're like off-roady tires. Yeah. These are on-road plus off-road plus winter rated, and so I don't have to actually swap for winters, which is why I picked these tires. All right, first send into cliche corner. Here we go. Oh, there's oh. so much body roll. <laughs> Do you think you can get a tire to lift? Uh, no, there's way too much travel in the suspension. <laughs> but it just like, it, it, it leans, it. it leans, and then it just kind of stops at the edge of that lean. It definitely doesn't feel like you can power out as fast as like maybe a faster truck. Yeah, exactly. But it feels pretty solid. Like if you, ha if you held the speed through something, you'd be fine. Yeah, like this compared to the newer one, the newer one would dust this. No question, but I don't care. Yeah, and I've been noticing a lot more of these on the road since you got yours. Perfect. It's like, it's pretty cool. <laughs> but a lot of them have like this weird like, ooh thing, but oh, we can talk about that later. We'll yeah, talk about that later. Yeah, those are different. That's a special edition. <laughs> <laughs> and when I first drove it, when you picked it up, it did feel kind of shaky. Yeah, it was really wobbly. So I needed to get the upper control arms done. So those were done. I got the tires replaced and I did the brakes. So everything is now perfect. Yeah, like it seems like 100% better. And so obviously the biggest thing with the Raptor, Fox shocks. They were replaced two years ago, I believe. So they are brand new since then and they need to be rebuilt every like 50 to 100,000 kilometers roughly. So you're gonna do that? Probably eventually. And as for shocks and comfort on the road, like this is very smooth. It's way more comfortable than a regular truck. Like a regular F-150, this is way better. Yeah, and we've been driving like a lot of stiff SUVs and like we're starting to get into like the sportier cars this year. And this is like, it's chill. Yeah, it's great. This thing on the road is, I know I said it in the first video that it rides like a Rolls Royce. It's not quite like a Rolls Royce, but it's a Rolls Royce for trucks. Maybe like an old Rolls Royce. Yeah, exactly. Like it <laughs> With does, leaf springs or it, something. <laughs> it absorbs everything. Like you don't feel little stuff. And I did take this on one dirt road excursion, which I did not film. It was the best. I could take it at the speed limit and slightly above. And it was like a washboard road, felt terrible, but in this, felt fine like it felt like i was still on pavement and even my wife said that it felt like she was on pavement like uh, pass, the best passes the wife test exactly my wife loves this so let's talk about power this thing is pretty damn fast now it's not mind-blowingly fast and i've taken some people for rides in this thing and they're like wow this thing's stupid fast but i guess i'm used to faster stuff so it doesn't feel that fast to me i'm definitely spoiled by fast cars yeah and i fully admit that but this thing is still definitely not slow and if i got the 5.4 I would have hated it. This is exactly how much power I need in this. And speaking of power comes fuel economy. I have a light on telling me that I have 58 kilometers to empty. So we have to finish this review in less than 58 kilometers, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> and so overall, I've been averaging about 18 liters per 100 kilometers because that's kind of mixed city and stuff like that. Here's the miles per gallon. America. America. In the city, it would be much worse. On the highway, I'm capable of about 16 liters per 100 kilometers. The previous owner who owned this for 350,000 kilometers, I did some math on how much fuel he used and how much it cost him. Okay. Are you ready for this? How much does this car cost brand new? We will get to that at the end of the video because I have a little thing that I haven't told you about yet. Okay, so uh, how much gas did he use? At 16 liters per 100 kilometers overall average, he drove 350,000 kilometers. He ran Shell 91 V power, so that is 91 octane obviously. Average price probably around $1.50 a liter. Sure. He used a total of 56,000 liters. <laughs> he spent a total of eighty-four thousand dollars in gas, I mean, which like, is which is more than this cost new. Yeah, but like, if you got to drive a Raptor, you got to pay for Raptor gas. Yeah, I know. It's just funny adding it up yeah, to see like, how more much than the car. Actually, Yeah, I never thought about it that way. I wonder how many liters left in the Olympic-sized swimming pool. Yeah, how many football fields? How many football in fields of, of gas tanks? Yeah. <laughs> Comes with the territory. I understand why he drove this on the highway for like 10 years because this thing just soaks up all the bumps. It's a joy to drive on the highway. I love driving this every chance I get. And for us, we drive press cars, so you're not even gonna be driving this all the time. So the gas mileage and everything isn't gonna be as bad. It doesn't matter that much. However, I have been driving it a little bit more because I'm more excited. So I've actually put oh, yeah. on like 2,600 kilometers already. That's good, that's good. Quite a bit. Good that, job. That's like half the mileage that I put on my Lexus all year last year. <laughs> So enough me driving. Yuri, this is your second opportunity to ever drive this because you drove it once, like for five minutes. Yeah, yeah, and the ISF, I only drove it during the review. I asked other times, he would never let me drive it. So 
This may be the only time I drive it, so I'll definitely send it. No, I promise. You'll be able to drive this more. Jump it more? Yeah. I, that ISF was just so expensive. This one, because it's a little bit cheaper, because the mileage is so high, I don't care as much. I'm going to send it. It's like a little burnout <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, traction control light and everything went on. And there you go. It's pretty 2010 fast. Naturally aspirated power. It's nice. 6.2 liters of fury. And I noticed that your seat wasn't even all the way down. I've adopted the truck life. I've raised my seat up. That's like the first car ever. It is. Truck ever. Yes, vehicle, it is. Vehicle ever. I've always gone to the lowest driving position. This, nah, straight up. So this is pretty smooth driving it around, but it is kind of heavy. Yeah, the steering feel? Yeah. Hydraulic. Old like, school. You know, it's nice. Yeah, it's great. This is 2010. Okay, and then do we have any sport modes? How do I go into sport mode? Okay, this is funny. There are no sport modes. Okay. I'm going to need you to stop. There is an unofficial sport mode. You've got to put it in off-road mode and then turn the traction to one. Send it. Oh, <laughs> you get a lot more out of that. Exactly. Wait, so how is it an unofficial sport mode and how did you find that out? So off-road mode, see, it's hanging gears yeah, down. Yeah, okay, turn this off, turn this off. So you got to just press it and then press this. And you have to be able to stop. Yeah, it only lets you enable off-road mode below five miles per hour, which is funny because it says miles per hour and we're in Canada. So basically it holds gears longer because I find that this is always a gear down. Like you always want it to be a gear up because fuel economy and whatnot, this is a six speed auto. Yeah. And this thing kills gas, obviously. So I find that I have to like downshift quite a bit because there are no paddle shifters. Yeah, you just got the three, two, and one, but yo, I'm gonna send it into cliche. Go for it. Full send here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how is it? Oh my God, we need to go Baha'i. I know. Don't you just feel like the king of the road? Like, like you could do anything. And there's a lot more control than I thought. Like. We've been playing this on Gran Turismo Sport. Yes, we have. Let us know if you guys want to play races against us because we're steady playing online. Yeah, follow us on Instagram, The Stray Pipes, Yuri Tereshin. This feels a lot better in real life than it does in GT Sport. It does. <laughs> like, it actually does. In GT Sport, it feels like it's all wobbly, like the steering does nothing. This is great. Okay, can I talk about looks now? Go for it. The color. It is... Molten Orange Tricoat Metallic. So it can look reddish in the shade, but look, look at us. What color is his shirt? What color is my shirt? That's the difference in real life. So the name, molten orange, lava, lava's molten. Molten orange is yellow, orange, yeah. and red. So it, this has everything in it. In the sun, you see nice flakes in it and everything. This is really nice paint. The best way to see the sparkles in this is like, you know how on the headlights and on SVT badge, how it kind of cuts in? Yeah. When the light hits that part, it like makes that part pop while everything else is normal orange or everything else will be normal orange while that pops. And this is the only optional paint that you actually have to pay from the factory. And then what's up with that Raptor graphic? Explain that to me. So the Raptor graphic, we have mud splash. It doesn't say Raptor, the newer ones say Raptor. This is the digital mud and it, it was optional. Okay, what I really like about it is that there's gloss and matte vinyl all put together to really make it like sparkle in the sun. Yeah, I love it. People hate it, but this is the only way that I wanted this truck. Okay, now the hood decal, decal. decal. I say decal, he says decal. Both are acceptable and I understand why people are upset the way I say it. All right. Why do we have that there? Is that supposed to be there? Technically, no. So this is a 2010, but it's a late model 2010. So it's not supposed to have that decal. That was an option in 2011. So because this is a late one, this actually got that from the factory. And then it also has the 6.2 liter badges on the side. It's not supposed to have that even if you got the optional 6.2 in 2010. So that was a 2011 thing because there was no more 5.4 in 2011. So this is all factory though. This is all factory. So this may be rarer than you even think. Possibly. And I will find out because there is a way to get a SVT build certificate because these were limited editions. So in the next update video, I will buy that certificate and have the exact build number in orange with the engine and everything. Do you want to remove that black thing from the hood? I kind of do, but I'm not going to because You probably it's been, shouldn't because it's factory. Yeah, and it's been like nine, 10 years. Ah, oh, so it's probably super gross underneath? Well, it's probably perfect underneath. Oh yeah, it yeah, won't it's match. Gross. Yeah, so as much as I don't want it, it's kind of cool that it's I, I, I like it. It says F-150 Raptor, it's cool. Yeah. So by the way, this is an SVT Raptor, not a Ford Performance Raptor. That's right. So that's why we've got the SVT Raptor badge. And this is the last SVT vehicle that they made. And our buddy, Joe Scapito, who we interviewed in Geneva, he was responsible for this and the Focus RS. He is the legend. Oh, and the GT500 as well. And All now right. he runs the Volkswagen R Division. <laughs> 
coolest guy ever. So looks wise, what makes this different than a regular F-150 of the time? I'm glad you asked, Yuri. We have real hood vents, we have real fender vents. The whole damn thing is so much wider. I yeah. believe it's eight inches wider. Man, from the right angle, the fenders stick out so much. It looks so awesome. Seeing it from the headlights, that little extra yeah, gap, yeah. that's the best. We also have three lights in the grill because this thing is wider than a regular F-150. It legally has to have those. So they could have put them on the roof like they do with commercial vehicles, but they didn't, they decided to put them in the grill and I am so glad that they did. That's one of the coolest like style functioning kind of things. And you don't have those three lights on unless you have full headlight mode on. Exactly. So you need to run full headlight mode and it looks pretty cool. Yeah. So should we talk about the headlights real quick? Go for it. They're halogen. We got the little amber at the bottom. I think they look pretty cool, but it sucks that you can't run just the ambers and no actual headlights on. Yeah, I agree. But I'm sure we could just disconnect it because it's a 2010 truck. Yeah, that's our DRLs by the way in Canada. And then we have that giant Ford grill, which you alluded to with Ooh grills yeah. earlier. Ooh grills and dude grills and dod grills and boob grills are all fake Raptor grills, which are pretty funny. Yeah, uh, I don't know who they're fooling or who they think they're fooling, but it's got to be someone. It's a copyright thing because apparently Ford goes after people like pretty hardcore, so they yeah. have to do that. Well, I saw on a classified site, I wanted to get a grill to swap for you like when you're not expecting it. They sell with the ooh and then they sell a F and an R and a D separately. That's how they get around it. It's pretty funny. It's so weird. But yeah, the, the dude grill Ford Raptors are so weird. It's kind of funny. There's a ton more stuff. We have 35s from the factory and pretty sick looking wheels actually. Yeah, yeah, with the SVT right in the middle. Yeah, I really like them. I'll probably swap them out at some point, but I do like these. And then we got the metal side step, which is really nice. Or is that a rock panel? That's both. That's It's, it's good. It really helps to get in this big truck. Yeah, exactly. And on that width thing, did you know that this is only half a centimeter narrower than the Hummer H1? <laughs> <laughs> That's how wide this is. Really? Yeah. It's crazy. I, but I feel like the Hummer H1's got more width on the interior. Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. And then the bed is obviously wider as well. You can't get any other bed length than this one. And then you could have gotten a Raptor in two different configurations with two full four doors or suicide doors. Actually, in 2010, you couldn't. 2011 oh. and beyond, you could. Okay. So this is the Super Cab. And you didn't want... I didn't want the Super Crew. Super Crew, yeah. yeah. So on the forums, that's called the Screw and the Scab. So I have the Scab. Okay. But I like the new Ford Raptor we had in Super Crew. I do agree that the new one looks better in the Super Crew. But this one looks wicked the way it is. Exactly. This is the joke spec, as I said in the first video. Like, this is the funniest way that you can get this truck. Okay, and now let's move on to the back end. So we've got Raptor SVT on there. Love that logo. Then how about our rear bumper? This one was chrome when I got it. So that was one of the first things that I took care of. Shout out to Paul. Follow him on Instagram, officer please. He's got the sickest Lexus ever and he's trying to sell it by the way. Yeah, Anyways. Maybe, maybe we should review it. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should. So he wrapped it for me, exact color match, love it. Now this is the way it's supposed to look. Because the guy replaced it because I guess his either got rust or damaged yeah, or and he didn't like want that. to pay full price. He said that it rusted. Maybe you damaged it. Yeah. Anyways, it's a new chrome bumper because he didn't want to pay $1,000 for the actual gray one. Yo, maybe he damaged it while he was reversing because the reverse camera is so small. Yeah, maybe. So the reverse camera is in the mirror and it's exactly like the one in the Toyota 86. The, and the current one, and the, the 2019. And the CHR. And then the bottom of the front bumper, that's different on the Raptors. And we have a skid plate. Yes, we do. And I, that will come in handy when we do off-road this yeah, thing, because we will. It, look, it looks cool. Everything about this looks like awesome. We've got side exhaust. Yep. Does it sound pretty good? It sounds pretty good for stock. But I will definitely take care of that. Are if, you, if anyone wants to sponsor oh. me, let me know. No, but I will take care of it it's for sure. It's going to be so obnoxious. It will be. Okay, now let's move into the interior. So we've got the orange everywhere, and we've got no infotainment, but we have Sync by Microsoft. We've got a little badge down here, which is hilarious to me. Yeah, and we have an aux port and a USB. I love the USB, but it doesn't charge my phone fast enough. Okay, and then we've got satellite radio. Buddy from before had some already in it. And yeah. like, it shows up the songs right here. You can't rewind. No, you can't. I tried. But it is funny to see like the names of all this stuff like written out in like a clock. And what do you complain about in all the new Fords? There's uh, no button to direct where the air goes. Exactly. There, there is right here. There's a button. Uh, they got it right and then they got it wrong later. Yeah. Like if it was this and then a screen on top, it would be pretty perfect, like for that, nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So you could get that, but it would be so terrible, I'm sure. And this pattern close up, like I thought it was orange at first, but it's got a cool little pattern in there. Yeah, it's got like little black dots in it. It's kind of weird. It's interesting. And then our seats are orange as well. This was an option. They're very comfortable. Yeah, they're super comfortable. They're more bolstered than I thought they would be. And even the back seat, I have enough room to sit behind you. Yeah, and so do I. It's pretty legit. Rex test. Okay. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. That's a good boy. 
That's a good boy. Okay, and back to this center gauge area. So we got a nice big armrest with room for two people to put their arms. It's huge inside. Tons of room. And then we've got auxiliary switches right in front next to a Raptor SVT badge. So the auxiliary switches are pre-wired so you can put in your light bars, your winches, all that stuff. There's actually wires in the glove box and in the engine bay. And that's where we have our off-road mode and our hill descent. And I believe this is the first Ford with hill descent mode. Oh, nice. And now they just put it into every single car yeah, and every, like, crossover ever. Every Kona and stuff has it now. <laughs> Echo Sport. Yeah. And moving on to the gauges, they're actually pretty straightforward. White, SVT and red. Very easy to read, and we got a little digital display in the middle. And then on the steering wheel, it's very comfortable, lots of buttons, and we've got the little red thing at the very top. Every car with the red thing, you're gonna have a good time. Yeah, race, like, car, race car steering wheel. Exactly. And uh, I mean, the rest of it's like pretty nice interior, like some a lot of hard plastic. Oh, they got tons of hard plastic. Like, it's a Raptor. Like, what do you expect? It's a, yeah, it's still an F-150. And then we've got Sony covers on the side for the Sony sound system. And the Sony sound system is actually pretty legit. However, this one has the subwoofer underneath the passenger side rear seat. And it takes up so much space. I kind of don't want it. Yo, sub delete? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know if you could do that. Yeah. That's not really a Jacob thing. No, it's not. And then we've got two high, four high, four low right here with diff locker. Yeah, so it's an electronic rear differential locker. So you just pull it out and boom, rear diff locked. No problem, great. And you can even use it in four high, which I believe you can't use it on the new Raptor. My favorite part about this drive selector is matching it on the opposite side is a 12 volt yeah. cigarette lighter. And it's like the exact same button pattern kind of looking thing. That's the smallest but like best touch like I, I think it's very cool overall like inside here it's very comfortable I feel like the king of the road but I'm not intimidated by it and you know what else I actually love seeing this F-150 thing on the windshield so do I yeah it's super cool to see that when you're driving and like all cars we got to see if it fits a small cup of coffee which it does perfectly and it also has rear cup holders right here but now the visor test if we save this have you have you actually not done a I, visor test i have actually not done a visor test i've waited like two months or however long i've had this <laughs> three two one ha don't have to sell it <laughs> you know i actually knew yeah i don't, don't want to tell you but it says I, sliding I, visor i saw first thing i did says, when i got it it I says looked. sliding visor right here so i knew all along but i didn't actually test it all right i think that's pretty much it this is that secret that I never told you about. What secret? The price. Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. Like brand new? Yeah. Okay. Watch this. I'm gonna reach into the glove box. Look what I found. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the window sticker? The window sticker. <laughs> the original window sticker. Legally mandated by the country and province. Boom, look at that. Okay, what's the price, what's the price? The price, when brand new, $56,029. Canadian. So the options this had, the power moonroof, the graphics package, which by the way, $1,300. The tailgate step, $300. The trailer brake controller, $300. Rear view camera, $500 for that little thing. <laughs> and the Raptor orange accent, $500. Total options, $4,330. And you picked it up for 18,000 Canadian with 350,000 kilometers on it, and you've put 2,000 into it, so you're at 20,000 Canadian. Exactly. I'm more than happy with that. And so lowest price, highest mileage at the time, no matter what you say, you're wrong. Yeah, call me out, good luck. <laughs> So overall, that's pretty much it. This thing had no competition when it came out. It blew everybody's minds in 2010, and there's still no competition for it. Like, actually though. There's no other truck you'd want to get online. There's no other full-size truck that's like a Raptor. There's only the newer Raptor. And like, and you're 100% happy with your purchase. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful for everybody that watches that enables me to buy this and continue driving it. I love this thing. This is honestly the best purchase I've ever made for a vehicle. I approve. Thank you. Now I just gotta go get my prowler. Now we gotta get Yuri a prowler. I swear I'm working on it. I just wanna get the color I want. After he got the color he wanted. I, I told him. I told him don't settle for the color. Yeah, yeah. Don't. So, so I'm going for my red or yellow clear coat. So don't forget to subscribe. Yuri's gonna get his prowler. Hit the notification bell so that you get notified when Yuri gets his prowler. Patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Join our YouTube membership and check out Sigma lenses so you can get wicked shots like we do. Yes. And again, thank you all of you for helping get this Raptor for Jacob. And we the North! I'm working on the Prowler. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. This is a subscription break. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even, we didn't do that.